Hi, happy travelers. Whether you're traveling with us through the stars and the planets, or you're going to travel with us on our 2020 Healing Transformational Voyage on January 12th to the 19th out of Fort Lauderdale. Yes, we are going to have the most exciting time. I'm Dr. Patricia Bell and our fabulous Nadia Shah is going to be joining us on this cruise along with five other brilliant astrologers that are going to be there for you so that you can understand and navigate yourself through the 2020s where all these wonderful different aspects can help us with our lives so that we can shine our light the best. It is going to be amazing. We are going on Royal Caribbean, Allure the Seas. Speaking of royal, my topic today happens to be Uranus and Taurus. Did you know that Queen Elizabeth, her son is zero, zero Taurus? That's right. So with this aspect of Uranus conjuncting her son, we're going to see some new times for this monarchy. What's actually amazing is that her son, S-O-N, Prince Charles, is a zero, zero Taurus moon. So the aspects that are going to happen right now is going to hit his mother's chart as well as his. And yes, his north node is at three Taurus. So there are major changes coming from the monarchy. The last time we saw this Uranus and Taurus, yes, Harry married Meghan. And what a change that was. I mean, who would have ever thought that we would be listening to a choir singing Stand By Me in the Royal Cathedral with the Queen sitting there with Prince Philip. But yet, what do all these changes mean? Today I'm in a beautiful garden. Yes, this is a, a fabulous garden. And who else has a fabulous garden? You're right, Prince Charles. Not many of us realize that Prince Charles is not only an avid gardener, but he is very much an ecologist and concerned about this planet and how things grow. Yes, Harry and Will, they grew up picking up trash as so that they had respect for Mother Earth themselves. So with this new monarchy coming, I fully expect that we're going to hear a lot about gardens, vegetation, and how we can take care of the planet through the humanitarian interest of these royals. Now, I may not be a queen, but I know that our planet needs us. And I know that we need to not just take care of the planet, but the planet heals us. This Uranus and Taurus is an opportunity for to us to take our physical selves into our gardens and allow our gardens to heal us. Today I'm in one of the more beautiful gardens uh, built by my friend Greg Ford and it is absolutely sensational to be able to sit amongst the trees and the plants knowing that they are a part of who we are and that's the connectedness between Uranus and Taurus, allowing that opportunity for us to understand. Do I need to garden? I'm, oh my gosh, I'm in an apartment. Yes, you do. You need to be able to get yourself a wall of herbs. And you can do that by getting uh, indoor lighting, full spectrum, and start planting these herbs in your home. For people who know me, I am very much the experiential astrologer, which means I want to experience these aspects. And so that takes me into my garden, bringing plants into my home, not only to see the beauty of them, but for also the nourishment they would bring. So hydroponics, being able to grow your own food in your apartment, or starting your garden right next to your house. These are all the things that are going to be emphasized during this transit of Uranus and Taurus. 
because knowing that we can grow our food is empowering to each and every one of us. Knowing that we have Mother Earth to sustain us is absolutely amazing. You know, once upon a time, uh, there was a training as far as to be able to see how one could be a healer if they had the ability to do hands-on healing. Well, part of the training of being able to do hands-on healing is they would put micro technology on your hands to see if you maintain the same amount of Hertz waves as the planet. So this is the time for all of us who do healing work, who need healing work, to entrain with this fabulous energy of healing and plants and gardens and all the food that we can lovingly grow with a positive, positive vibration. Now, I want to extend this a little bit further and take us back to the 1800s when Uranus was in Taurus. When Uranus was in Taurus, there was a brilliant, brilliant scientist. His name is James Maxwell Clark. James Maxwell Clark was the one who found how the particles could rotate around the planet Saturn. Interesting, isn't it? Saturn, which is at one time considered the ruler of this aspect with Uranus. But he was able to understand the particles and their mo motion around this, the circles of Saturn. But let's take it a little bit further. James Clark, Maxwell Clark also develop an idea of particle reformulation. Particle reformulation, otherwise known as cold fusion, can find itself reversing the negative particles or the positive ions into negative ions. Yet he was able to do this in an experiment. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to reproduce this, this. And James Maxwell Clark said it was the nature spirits that were the key factor in helping us particularly reformulate. So here we are in nature, and here we are talking about gardens, and now we take ourselves to nature spirits. Is there an opportunity? during Uranus and Taurus to possibly invite our nature spirits to come, whether they're the water ones from the Undines, whether they are, you know, the salamander fire energy, are they the, the sylphs that are our fairies? You know, why not let those little gnomes come into our house to be able to give us that energy of the stone people, of the earth itself? This is an amazing solution to think of how we really, really are going to get through Uranus and Taurus. Taking it a little bit further, there was a wonderful, amazing woman named Sofia Kolveskaya. Yes, there is an asteroid named after her. She was able to also indicate the rings of Saturn and she, but most important, outside of her astrological connections and her astronomy connections, is the fact that she came out of Russia and she was the first woman to be awarded a professorship and to get a doctorate without having to do all the doctoral work. It was awarded to her. So, when you hear this, you think, my gosh, this Uranus and Taurus is going to be about women, and it is going to be about women moving to the forefront, and it is going to be about women being recognized. So we've got Mother Earth, we've got women, we've got this whole feminine vibration coming to us at this particular time in our lives, which is really, really important. Because whether you're a man or a woman, 
you have both sides. You have the anima and the animas. And we, at this particular time, we're looking at developing that. Yes, with our planet Earth, and yes, within ourselves. Now, the third scientist happens to be an archaeologist. And he is um, James Theobald Bent. And he went to Africa and he found the stone circles of Africa. That's right. There are stone circles in Africa, not unlike the ones in England. And yes, they are connected. But these stone circles are also connected to a place called Adam's Calendar. Adam's Calendar happens to be where it is believed that beings from other galaxies came to this planet to be able to work and create a part of who we are. I know, that's a big wow, isn't it? Oh my gosh, galactic energy coming to this planet to basically seed us. I mean, we all know, you know, genetically that we come from this um, African woman and that we all have a genetic bloodline to her. But what kind of fascination could it be that we could be connected to this particular site in Africa where Adam's calendar is and that we're able to know that we come from the stars? How awesome is that? That it's not just the stars that are in the sky, but we are the stars themselves that allow ourselves this connectedness to our own personal understanding of who we are. I always say every uh, child comes with a set of instructions. And yes, they do. We come with a set of instructions. Our astrology chart that allows us to look at what we were born to do, become, and to see how we are able to do this. But now, with this amazing time of Uranus and Taurus, we can not only transcend the chart, but we are able to take things to a higher level of consciousness that we have never been able to do before. So, when at the stone circles, these stones sing. So, we've got another aspect of Uranus and Taurus, and that's sound healing. Sound healing is going to be so important with this aspect. We're going to find people being able to do sound healing and toning that will not only help heal the planet, but heal ourselves. A uh, funny story is I was going to basically um, give some blood and things weren't going and all of a sudden I started to tone like oh, and everything worked out perfectly. So these are fascinating opportunities to understand how the music in your life can be able to work with you and you can be able to work with it. Each planet has a sound and upon further study you can understand what planetary sounds you need to work with. I don't necessarily uh, tell anybody a particular sound because I like each and every one of you to resonate with what that sound is for you and how you are able to work with that sound that makes it work. Now, one other aspect. Uranus and Taurus is asking us to connect to all that is. Taurus is a very earthy physical body kind of uh, part of us. It's our values. It's who we are. And to thy own self be true. Yes, I hope you could have heard that bird sort of signaling that what I'm saying is spot on. I want you to be true to yourself. But I also want you to know there are people like myself, Dr. Patricia Bell, Nadia Shah, Adam Gainsburg, Cassandra Butler, Samuel Reynolds, 
Eric Myers, all going to be on this cruise, January 12th to the 19th, 2020. We will be leaving out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You can contact me at patriciabell.net or call at 716-595-2332. Welcome on board for the trip of your life. God bless you and happy travels.